This is the Danset record player I mentioned in last week's video. Um, local chap just uh, brought it round. He's got the motor going, that was seized up apparently. He's got that going, there's a bit of oil on it. Um, but he says he's got other problems. Well, one obvious problem is this here is, this is very tight. This turns and goes down, if it will, oh, on top of the, you know, on the record. Okay, and it, there we are. That's the answer. A squirt of this. You know, I'll just put a little bit on that shaft there like that. That's it, just a little bit there. Work that up and down and round and round. There we are already. Yeah, look at that. That's it. Perfect. This here, this little arm here that's sticking out, is the record sensor and that, that is quite tight. And when I release it, it doesn't spring up quickly. All right. That, on a seven inch record, when that drops down, it doesn't touch that little arm. On the, what is it, the 78, it's 10 inch. It just catches that arm and flicks it in a little bit. And on the 12 inch LPs, that goes right the way in like that and then flicks back up. That's not flicking up properly. Again, a little bit of this in there. Yeah, don't be afraid to squirt it all in there. Work that a few times. You know. WD-40 all over my hand now. At least I won't squeak. Okay. Work that a few times. And 9 out of 10, that will cure it. Right, so we've released that. That's fine now. The turntable here doesn't spin freely. When you spin that, it should go on and on and on. Again, a little bit there. I'm going to take this off in a minute. That's it. Right, there we are, that's running freely. There's a little ball race under there. I'm going to take this off and I'll, I'll lubricate that as well and all the other bits. I'll show you that in a minute. That's running freely. The arm here, this, just checking, you can see this on the monitor. This should obviously go back and forward like that freely. That feels a bit tight. There's a little lifting uh, spigot thing there that comes up to lift the arm. That'll want a little squirt on it, like that, plus around that arm mechanism. Okay, so that's all free. Let's see if I can actually get it to do something now. Yeah, it's all very tight still, because uh, that's it. Obviously, I've not been under the, underneath. I'm going to take the turntable off in a minute, show you under there, then we'll have a look under the deck itself. Um, chap also wants a new stylus. I don't stock because I don't do record players. I used to stock a lot. I had loads of different types, but I'll have to order that online somewhere, eBay or wherever. Um, so, yeah, that's... Oh, now what's happening? That's not switching off at the end. This here, the knob, you know, the uh, off manual and the reject one, that is very tight. Ah, and it's not flicking back itself. That again, yeah, you see, it's not <laughs> that again. WD 40 cures everything, okay? So that's on top of the deck. This, yeah, this is very tight. The speed control is very tight, it's probably not working at all. So I'll check that anyway. That's that. Um, what I do now is show you under the turntable, then underneath the deck itself. That's the turntable off, just the circlip in the middle, and that lifts off. Um, what I'll do, I'll take a photograph of this so you can see. Um, basically, the idler wheel, uh, that one's very tight. Uh, also, it should, the whole mechanism, slide back and forward like that, back and forth. That all needs lubricating. I'll take a photo that I can show you a little bit better. Um, on the, this, I don't know whether you can see that, that sort of main gear wheel there, there's a couple of plates that move back and forth, as these do just, they're very tight. That all needs, yeah, they're very tight. That uh, needs lubricating. Um, I'll take a photo, then you can have a look close up. Okay, this is a photo of the, the deck with the turntable removed. The red arrow there is pointing, that's a little adjusting screw, and that adjusts the, the vertical position of that rubber idler wheel 
and the, the yellow arrow is pointing to the motor pulley. That is a stepped pulley. Okay, so when you change the speed control, the pulley goes up and down, the, the idler wheel goes up and down the stepped pulley. All right, what you want it to do is on each step, you want it obviously to be in the middle. You don't want it to be sort of half on one step and half on the other. So the, the red arrow pointing to that little adjusting screw, that moves it up and down. That is to adjust it to the center of each uh, step on the pulley. That's quite important because very often they are out. You know, it might be all right on 78, but you go down to 33 and it's sort of only half on the step. So you, you get it just right with that. Um, the green arrow is pointing to, that's just basically a, a, a shaft. The whole assembly goes up and down on that. That needs lubricating also underneath, but I'll show you that as well in a while. Um, the motor pulley on top there where the yellow arrow points to, that needs to be lubricated there. Um, if you, you will get oil or whatever, WD-40, you will get it on the rubber idler wheel, you'll get it on the step motor pulley, and you'll probably get it on the inside rim of the, the turntable or the drive surface. Um, methylated spirits on a rag, clean it all up with that, the rubber idler wheel, the pulley, and the inside rim of the turntable. Um, a good, you know, a good uh, dose of methylated spirits on a rag. Wipe it all clean with that. Um, the white arrow points to the little bull race. There's a washer there. You lift that washer up, you'll see a little bull race bearing. That needs lubricating. Now the, the two blue arrows. The lower one is pointing to a circlip, uh, and that's holding two metal plates in place. They are the metal plates I was talking about. They need to swing very, very freely back and forth. Very often they're seized up. Uh, what it is, there's a little, I'll show you underneath again later, a little arm underneath that just pushes those. It sort of just hits them as the arm, as the record player arm comes across. It pushes this little lever, which pushes those and it, it, they engage with the gear wheel on the turntable itself that starts that large cog you can see there rotating and uh, that then engages with the other gear wheel and the whole mechanism starts. Very often that whole gear wheel there you can see is seized up. It needs taking off anyway. The uh, center circlip, that's the blue arrow pointing, you know, the above one, the top one, undo that circlip, pull the whole thing off and you'll see inside there's like a, a can that, that follows a groove all the way around clean out the grease, clean it all up and uh, re-lubricate it. Um, yeah, if you have to remove those two plates, uh, just take that circlip off there. Best to take the whole pulley, the whole gear wheel off the deck, get it on the bench and uh, release that bottom circlip and those two plates will come off. Just remember how they go back on. <laughs> They've got to be obviously the right way up. Uh, so that's basically it. Um, Check the rubber motor mounts are okay. Um, check everything else. The the uh, where the records go on at the top, the little little metal bit at the top of the spindle goes in for, to release the record. That could do with a little bit of WD-40 as well. Okay, let's have a look underneath the deck now. Right, this is underneath. I think what I'll do again is take a photograph because um, there are things I want to point out here and it'll be easier on a photograph. Um, you can see there's the motor. Drop a little bit of oil down there to lubricate the bottom bearing. Um, there's all this mechanism here. You can see there's old grease on here. Uh, this, that might be right, but sometimes it does solidify over the years, so that might all want cleaning off and uh, re-lubricating. There are various there's a, a little, I don't know if you can see that, there's a bar there that slides backwards and forth there. Very often that's seized up. What that does, as the arm comes across to the end of the record, it just pushes that bar up along like that. Okay, so it doesn't want any resistance, otherwise the record will just get stuck in the groove and go because it's stuck against that. If that, if that is happening then uh, it's invariably this is the problem, this is seized up. And what that does on the gear wheel I showed you, 
that just pushes the little plate out so it engages on that cog there, that gear wheel there, that gear wheel I should say. Once that's engaged, the turntable then turns that large cog and it meshes, you know, meshes properly um, and the whole mechanism starts. So what that does there, just pushes the little metal plate out, the little plate, a little lug like that on the plate, locks into that, into the cog, starts the, the process and then of course the thing meshes properly. Okay, let's, I'll show you a photograph. Okay, underneath the deck, the green arrows, uh, the bottom left green arrow, that's the, uh, the control for reject on off uh, manual, that's the one that uh, I showed you that was seized up. Um, basically just more WD-40, the other two green arrows are part of that, uh, make sure all that's free there and lubricated properly, because um, when it finally switches off the whole mechanism, that needs to be free, otherwise it, it won't switch off, it can't, uh, it won't click into the off position. Um, the yellow arrows are the speed control, the bottom uh, bottom right one, that's the, the speed control knob. And uh, the two yellow arrows up the top, that's the idler wheel assembly. Now that idler wheel, not only does it go up and down on the shaft, it also can rotate side to side. Okay and it's a, sp a sort of spring-loaded thing, so it's, it's a pushed against the step motor pulley, spring-loaded. So all that needs to be free, and that, that does seize up very often. Um, okay, that the red arrow there, not the aeroplane, the one on the picture, the red arrow, that is that bar that I was talking about. Um, so the arm gets to the, you know, the stylus gets to the end of the record, and the arm pushes that bar across uh, towards the centre of the deck, which then engages in the turntable cog and starts the whole mechanism off. Okay, so that's that bar there, make sure that's free. The blue arrows there, uh, basically just showing you the, the old grease. You, you don't always have to clean off every speck of the old grease. What I usually do is just wipe it all off and then give everything a squirt with WD-40. Um, that plate that the blue arrows are pointing to, uh, but underneath that there's a lot of uh, mechanics going on under there. Get the WD-40 nozzle in there, give it a good squirt, you know, don't be afraid to soak the whole lot. All right, it'll, it'll probably want a couple of hours to drip, um, you know, to drain off and it'll drip everywhere. So if you're doing it in situ in the record player cabinet, put some old rag or an old towel or something down, otherwise it'll drip into the wood. Um, basically, all, well, not all record player deck problems, but most of them are caused by something seizing up, something's unable to move. Uh, corrosion, you might find corrosion has, uh, if it's been in a damp environment, corrosion's attacked here and there. Um, again, lubricate it, get it all working. Um, what I usually do, I'll show you when I put this back together, I, I stick a record on there and with a clothes peg keep the, the centre arm up so it thinks there's a record there the whole time and it just keeps playing the same record again and again and again. I'll leave it on for hours and it just uh, turn the volume down of course. But um, actually there's another way where it doesn't have to play the record. I'll show you how I do that as well later. So yeah, that's underneath the deck. Uh, there are no adjustments as such under there. Uh, I showed you the idea, idler wheel adjuster on top. There's another adjuster on top which I'll show you in a minute to adjust the dropping position of the arm. So the stylus starts at the beginning of the record, not halfway in or out too far, so it misses the record. So yeah, that's it. Basically that's it. What I, I have had in the past are uh, decks underneath where they're so seized up the old grease is just solid. I've had to take them outside, get an old paintbrush and wash it all off with petrol. Uh, obviously you don't turn it all on until the petrol's <laughs> it will evaporate it properly otherwise it'll spark and blow up. <laughs> um, but yeah I have had to wash a lot of that old grease off with petrol. Only, only on one or two decks, I mean that's very rare 
that you'll have to do that. So that's about it. There we are, that's underneath. The, the main points are that red arrow with the sliding bar and those two yellow arrows top right there. That idle wheel assembly. OK, let's move on. There we are. Clothes peg to keep that bar up. Screwdriver, deck tilted, screwdriver taped in place. That will run now. I'll leave that for 20 minutes or so just to run everything in. It's a quicker way than just keep playing a record. You'll be here all day otherwise. That's it. Just gets everything moving, gets uh, everything lubricated, all the WD 40 moving around everywhere. There you go. That screw there is for the adjustment of the arm dropping position. So you want the stylus to start, you know, at the beginning of the record, not to miss the record and not to start further in. Um, just a, a, just turn that quarter of a turn at a time. Uh, I forget, I think you undo it. I forget which way around it is now. I think you undo it uh, to make the arm go in further. I can't remember. You will find out where, when you adjust it. So that's that little adjusting arm there, little adjusting screw there rather. The spring you can see there, you can't see the top of it, the top right hand corner, that just hooks into the arm. I didn't show that in the photo, I should have done. Um, there are various positions it can hook into and that's the arm weight. It's a bit primitive but that, that sort of the position of the spring there where it hooks into the arm up the top determines the weight of the arm uh, onto the record. Okay, that's that. When I had the arm sliding down the screwdriver to keep repeating the process, um, I took the stylus out and protected the cartridge. Uh, just thought I'd better mention that, otherwise you'll end up, everything will work fine, but the stylus will be ripped to bits <laughs> and possibly the cartridge spoiled. Put a bit of tape over it, or if it's a turnover type, flick it halfway. Anyway, a lot of record decks, uh, you know, they're more or less the same principle, whether it's uh, you know Garrard or Calaro, whatever. They're all more or less the same. They've got different arrangements, but um, they're all more or less the same. You can, you can work out what's going on. As I've said with radios, uh, repairing radios, before you start looking for faults, if it's at least working, uh, but it's distorted, low volume, uh, low sensitivity or whatever, change the capacitors first. Uh, I've said that all along and that's what I do, is change the, the old wax capacitors, then start looking for faults. Same with record decks, lubricate everything, clean everything, lubricate everything, get it all running, then start looking for faults. Don't think, oh well it's not doing this or it's not doing that and try and work out why until you've cleaned and lubricated everything because that you know nine out of ten times as I've said that'll cure it. Um, I've got a jig I show I think I've shown you before I made up a wooden sort of jig with a plinth on top. Um, you know have a look at this photograph this is the the wooden jig and the idea of this is I've, I've cut it to, and modified it to fit most decks. Uh, it's a lot easier sometimes to take the deck out of the record player altogether especially if it's doing something rather odd, rather weird. You can have a, have a look, you can see underneath. You know, you can sort of get down on your knees, have a look underneath, see what's happening and what isn't happening that should be happening, if you're with me. So, yes, there we are. It's, it's worth knocking up something like that if you're going to start doing you know, a few decks. If you're just doing one or two of your own, then, well, I don't know, even then, it's only a few bits of wood screwed uh, and glued together. Um, okay, that's that. What else was I going to mention? When I repaired a lot of record players, I used to keep scrap decks because sometimes, I mean many times in fact, I'd have a customer come in. I've looked at the deck myself and I've got a spring. I don't know where it goes. Or there was a spring somewhere. I've lost it. You know, that way you think, oh no, here we go. The thing to do, you can't remember all, all the different bits and pieces on the decks. What I used to do is get a scrap deck, have a look under that. Oh, that's the spring that's missing and that's where it goes from there, wrap round there, across to there. So it is handy if you're going to do a lot of decks, keep a few scrap ones, which of course are also useful for spares. 
you might need to take this mechanism out here. You know, I said the record size sort of sensing device. Um, it's only a screw, take the top off, that'll slide out. Um, so yeah, it might be a good idea to do that. As I say, lubricate everything first, then see what's going on. Adjust the arm dropping position. Make sure, make sure everything's free and running easily. Yeah, that little arrangement there, want some oil where that just you know releases the next record. Um, some records you will find it, it'll drop perhaps two or three at once. That's not a problem, not normally a problem with the deck. It's the holes in the record over the decades they've worn, they've got bigger. So when it goes to drop one record, you'll find two or three full. Um, okay, is there anything else? As I said earlier, clean everything up with methylated spirits in here the turntable the inner rim the drive surface you know any oil on there at all i remember a customer coming to pick up a record player once um it was all finished it was on its side on the floor anyway i put it up on the bench i'm now just cleaning the the edge of the idler wheel there and uh you can see the black coming off it it, it wouldn't play at all, it just, the, the turntable just wouldn't go around. What it was, I'd, uh, where I'd lubricated everything, WD-40, I'd put loads on, and um, what happened was, it had, well it was the record players on its side, it dripped onto that inner surface. And of course, <laughs> there was just no drive at all. So, uh, that was a bit embarrassing. It was also the last time I did that. <laughs> right there we are that's that's that now the the circuit circuit can go back on there and a uh, bit of a clean up and job done so there we are that's about it I've just got to put that circuit back this was going to be uh, a weekly video one of the weeks I think week 70 but I realized that the video is getting quite long so I thought what I'd do is separate the two make this a a record player deck servicing video. Um, I know I've only talked about the BSR deck. What is this, a Monarch? Well, most of them are Monarch, aren't they? Um, as I said earlier, all decks are, well, they're not similar really. They've all got different arrangements, but the principle is the same, I suppose. That's what I mean. Um, I'm not gonna talk about the amplifier. <laughs> Basically, the radio videos cover the amplifier, clean the controls, uh, whatever the cartridge if you need to replace it that's a simple screw in the middle the problem is getting hold of a new cartridge <laughs> as I found out idler wheel if that's completely had it I don't know what you do try gluing a rubber tire around it if you can get something uh, that's suitable or try and find a new idler wheel there's no way around that if it's completely had it there's not much you can do um, so, okay, that's about it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope you've learned something. Don't forget, we're learning all the time. Yeah, I'm learning all the time. We all are. Every time I get a radio on the bench, I discover something new, it seems. So, thanks for watching, and see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.